let's talk about spaced repetition. This is probably one of the best, most repeatedly proven way to improve learning. And we will actually revisit this during the techniques section as well, because it's so important. And the idea is that revisiting and practicing what you learn is important. Because research shows that spaced repetition, which is repeating things after a few days, is the best way to build and strengthen the synaptic connections in our neurons to improve memory. That's why we want to avoid cramming, which doesn't build solid neural structures. The idea is to put just as much time as you would have cramming, but instead spacing it over a long period of time. For example, if this was a graph of our learning. We learn something, and then as time passes, we start to forget it. But then we do spaced repetition. We spend another day remembering and practicing that skill. Well, that improves our learning. And then again, as time passes, we forget a little bit, and then we learn it again, and then again, and then again. Eventually, our learning, although it's always constantly in a dip, it improves with each repetition that we do because each time we're strengthening our connections in our neurons. The main takeaway on this point is not to spend too much time in one sitting going over the same material over and over and over again. The law of diminishing return applies here. It's the idea that you don't need 12 hours a day to learn a topic. Your time can be better used efficiently when learning when it's spread out over many sessions and even over many different modes of learning. You will notice that I placed these lessons not completely in sequential order or an order that may make sense to you. And I'm trying to take advantage of spaced repetition here. I've mentioned the topic of spaced repetition now a few times in this course. So it should trigger something in your brain. We also talked about focus and diffuse mode several times in different lectures. Again, improving your understanding of focused and diffused mode of thinking. By this point, we should have talked enough about diffuse and focus mode that it almost becomes natural to you. You can explain this concept. You can use the Feynman technique to explain this to a friend. That's what spaced repetition is. The idea that cramming is not a good strategy, but repeating things, doing things over and over, taking each day to do one thing well, or each week, once a week to do something over long term, really help you build those neural connections to create those long term memories. Let's talk about our next technique. And that is, hey, we've seen this before. That's right, it's spaced repetition revisited. That's because spaced repetition is a proven technique in the sciences to help with learning. And if we remember, spaced repetition was all about repeating and practicing something over and over, not doing everything in one go, instead spreading it out over days, over months, over years. And by now, at this point in the course, we should know that Overlearning is not good. It's a poor strategy for somebody who just overlearns and spends 12 hours a day focusing on a topic and getting burnt out. You're not being efficient, right? So we learned that repetitive overlearning in the same session is not a good idea. This idea of hammering away at a subject until you get it, that's not how it works. You need to take breaks which is good news for people like myself who value taking breaks, who wants to do something that is enjoyable and learning has to be enjoyable, not a painful process. And this idea of spaced repetition also helps with the idea of not doing the same thing over and over, not using just one technique to learn a subject. You use spaced repetition with different techniques that we're going to learn to retain a subject. Maybe testing yourself one day, maybe teaching the topic to somebody else another day, doing different techniques. Remember, we learned that the scientist Barbara Oakley mentioned this idea, right? This idea of the neural patterns in our brain related to that memory and how we have to keep firing them so that the neurons connected to each other 
understand that this is a strong memory. This is a long-term memory that we want to hold. And space repetition is the only way that you're going to create long-term memories. You have to have those neurons fire for more than just one day. They need to fire over days, over weeks, over months. For example, learning to ride a bike. At the beginning, it's really hard. You're not going to learn how to ride a bike in one day. But you do it over and over and over, each day getting a little bit better, taking breaks in between, and then finally, one day, you get it. Those neurons have fired so many times that they now understand how to ride a bike. And because you've used space repetition so much, you can take a break for two years, three years from riding a bike, and you'll probably still be able to ride a bike because those neuron connections are so strong which is actually a good news. You don't have to do spaced repetition over and over and over. After a certain point, those neuron connections get strong enough that you don't have to repeat as often, only once in a while. Now, this idea of the spaced repetition, it's called the spacing effect. It's the reason that most self-learners and learning experts recommend that you space your learning because your brain needs time to process that information as well. Now, when we talk about space repetition, we also have to talk about the forgetting curve. And if we go to Wikipedia, guess what? There's a topic about forgetting curve. Now, I really like this diagram over here because it shows a really interesting aspect of the forgetting curve. The forgetting curve explains why cramming is the worst strategy ever before a test and how it doesn't contribute to your long-term professional growth. Now, the forgetting curve, if we look at the red line over here, is what happens. So after one day, you see that our knowledge of what we had the day prior drops a lot, and then so on and so forth and so on and so forth. By the sixth day, we've almost forgotten what we crammed during an exam or a test. But by using spaced repetition, which is what these green lines are, we actually decrease the slope of the forgetting curve. So if we repeat that topic, on the second day, you see that the drop-off is actually smaller. And then the third day, we repeat that learning. Well, again, it's now a slower forgetting curve. And then by the third day, you see that our dropping off of knowledge, our forgetting curve, is a lot flatter. Start to think of your brain in this way, in systems, in this idea that we lose information. So how can we retain it to be efficient with our brain? Because at the end of the day, lots of practice works, but only if it is spaced. Practicing just one day won't make you a professional soccer player. Now, by this point, we know that this idea of mass repetition relies on our short-term memory, but it relies on the short-term memory by using recall to recall information and use our long-term memory to remember what we had learned the day prior. This effort required to recall and retrieve that information after forgetting it a little bit is what we call in the brain consolidation. It's a way for the brain to say, hey, hey, hold on. This human over here keeps firing these neurons, so we should probably strengthen it because we're going to be asked to remember this a lot. And the brain wants to be efficient, so it says, okay, okay. We need this information, so I'm going to consolidate and strengthen those neural connection. Our brains are just trying to be efficient, and we give that little hint to the brain saying that, hey, this is important, and it's going to come up throughout our life, so you better remember it. And this is why the Feynman technique works so well, one of our pillars, because we're using recall to teach somebody information, and we use different chunks of knowledge to connect the dots. Now, in the next lesson, I'll show you one of my favorite ways to enhance recall, and it's by using diagrams. But we'll get to that shortly. For now, space repetition, I think I've repeated it enough times that you should be confident with space repetition and explaining it to somebody, as well as applying it in your own efficient learning practices.